I'm not even joking when I say that out of all the questions I receive about running a web design business, about 70% center around the web design process. In other words, people are looking for a step-by-step -step blueprint to follow with each of their web design clients, from capturing the lead to publishing the site. I debated back and forth on whether it was a good idea to provide this. On the one hand, I feel like people should develop their own web design process that makes the most sense for them and their clients. While there is certainly nothing wrong with being inspired by others' work, and even copying certain aspects of it, merely copying and pasting every single element of someone else's business will do you and your clients a big disservice. But on the other hand, this is a question that frequently pops up in my comments, emails, and over at launchers. The people demand it, and I've never been one to let the people down. I want to give you the web design process that I personally follow with each of my clients. It is by no means the definitive process for all web designers, and I'm sure there are many out there who would disagree with me, but it works for me, and it helped me scale Rapid Web Launch into a successful web design agency. Let's get started. Step number one is lead generation. What's the biggest and most frustrating challenge for aspiring web designers everywhere? You already know what it is. Say it with me, getting clients. When it comes to getting web design clients, there are two categories, inbound leads and outbound leads. Inbound leads simply come to you without you having to aggressively chase them down. What? What is this sorcery? I want leads to magically come to me too. That's probably what you're saying right now. Not so fast, cowboy. I never said it didn't take any work. The work is just distributed differently. Inbound web design leads generally come from one of these places, referrals, Google, YouTube, or social media. First, referrals. As you satisfy one client after another, you'll begin to see a snowball effect. Happy customers tell other people about your services who then reach out to you to get you to do work for them. Referrals are crucial to building a successful web design business. Always make sure your clients are blown away by how great you are. FAQ time. Should I set up an affiliate program for my web design business? No, don't bother. While affiliate programs can be a very effective way to get people to sell your products on your behalf, it doesn't work well with the web design industry. It's too difficult to effectively track where your leads are coming from and who should receive the commission. Then we have Google. As a web designer, Google is your number one f You know what? I'm sorry. That's just too cliche. Google is not your number one friend. Google is your hot date. Take Google out to the trendy winery just outside of town. Share a nice bottle of Merlot and a few tapas while being serenaded by the local Ed Sheeran wannabe. Talk about Google's family and upbringing and be continuously interrupted as you try to talk about yours since Google already knows everything about you. Finish the evening with a glowing candlelit dinner and rom-com viewing at the local drive-in. And don't cheap out on the flowers and chocolate either. Creepy? Yeah. Accurate? Absolutely. The key to getting high quality and qualified inbound leads lies with Google. People who are searching for web design services are already interested in buying. They're just searching for the right designer for them. So how do you get your web design services to rank at the top of Google when there is so much competition already? Content, my friends. It's all about the blogging. Putting out consistent, high quality blog posts is exactly how I built Rapid Web Launch from nothing. If I didn't get heavily into blogging, I would not be where I am today. Make no mistake, this takes a lot of work and it is most definitely a long-term game. There are no shortcuts here. But when you finally get your site to start ranking on the first page of Google, the leads will start pouring in. However, blogging wasn't the only important piece of my content marketing strategy. I also made YouTube videos. In fact, I ended up creating a content marketing strategy that involves making a video for every single blog post that I write. All of my YouTube videos contain a call to action that funnels people to my site. The type of CTA I use depends on the subject of the video. YouTube is the world's second largest search engine, 
and it is owned by the world's number one search engine. If you're still not using YouTube to market your web design business, you're quickly falling behind. It's already difficult to get people's attention on there. Imagine what it will look like five years from now. The final category of inbound leads, we have social media. I hate social media. I really do. I think it damages our lives more than it enriches them. Depending on how you use social media, you could argue that it's actually a tool used for outbound leads rather than inbound. And since I prefer building inbound leads to outbound, it gives me all the more reason not to use it as a sales tool. But I do recognize that it can be a useful tool for producing and sharing content that drives traffic to your site and generates leads. I found Twitter to be the most effective social media platform for this. It is by far the most customizable and open-ended of all the platforms. These days, I only use LinkedIn and Pinterest. Unless you count YouTube, of course. Next, we have outbound leads. Generating outbound leads takes a special kind of person. It is hard work. Specifically, you need to have a near obsession with all things sales. Outbound leads can come from cold calling, cold emailing, cold DMing, cold meetups and conferences. Is it just me or did it get a little chilly in here? Cold simply refers to the fact that your lead has had zero interaction with you or your brand. As such, they're gonna need some warming up. Most of this comes from straight up hustling. Like keeping a spreadsheet of thousands of businesses and tracking all of your phone calls and emails and messages kind of hustle. Then you've got to follow up with them for weeks, months, and sometimes even years. Warming a cold lead is about as salesy as you can get. If you don't like sales, I'd suggest you either learn to love it or invest heavily in the inbound marketing strategies we mentioned above. No matter what, you will have to get involved in sales in some form. But it's much easier when you've already warmed the lead up with a blog post or YouTube video. Step number two of the web design process is sell yourself. Oh my gosh, a new lead just came in from your website? Now what? Now it's time to put that sales cap on, buddy. And believe it or not, you're not selling web design services. You're selling yourself. The web design services come secondary to that. And that's because there are tons of web designers to choose from out there. But there's only one you. It's time to tell your story. People buy from people. Having fantastic web design skills is great and all, but if you have zero differentiating qualities, why should they choose you? A few years ago, two researchers created a website called significantobjects.com to test the value of storytelling. They purchased random, insignificant knickknacks for $1.50 each, added some compelling stories to them, then turned around and sold them on eBay. In total, they spent $128.74 on this investment. Do you know how much they sold these items for? $3,612.51. That is the power of storytelling and why you need to get really good at it. Don't be afraid to be a little different, even if it sometimes means an uncomfortable amount of transparency. Step number three of the web design process is sign the client. After getting all salesy and storytelly with your lead, they've decided they like you and are ready to move forward. Awesome. Now you need to decide whether or not you're going to have your client sign a contract. If you choose not to have a written contract signed by both parties, you should at least clearly define the terms and scope of the arrangement via email. So you have a written understanding of both sides commitments. FAQ time. Should I get my web design client to sign a contract? This is entirely up to you. Personally, I don't bother. Everyone hates legal mumble jumble and I know my leads do too. And I never want my clients to feel like they're trapped in some way. Relationships are built on trust. Without that, you have nothing. Contracts start the relationship by saying, I don't trust you. Step number four of the web design process, get paid. Cash time. Before you do any work, you need to receive a deposit. Most web designers, including myself, do a 50-50 split of the invoice. 50% deposit up front, then the remaining 50% when the site is ready to launch. I require all of my clients to pay via credit card. No wire transfer, no emails, no debit, just credit cards. 
Credit cards are commonly used by everyone in North America and offer protection for both myself and the client. This is especially helpful if they're still nervous about working with someone they've never met. Here's a couple of tools I use for invoicing and expense tracking. First, FreshBooks. FreshBooks has been with me since the beginning. It has been my favorite invoicing platform for years. It's perfect for those who have less than 50 clients. But after that, it just gets too expensive. Once I topped 50 plus clients a couple of years ago, they raised the price on me to $70 a month. That's just way too much for invoicing and expense tracking. And that's when I switched to my new favorite invoicing platform, Invoice Ninja. Invoice Ninja is loaded with tons of features. It has everything FreshBooks has and more. And at just $90 a year, is extremely affordable. Now, it's not nearly as polished and user-friendly as FreshBooks, so it will take some time to get the hang of it. But if your web design business is growing fast, it's a better choice. They also have a completely free version, so you can give it a try before investing in the pro version. Step number five of the web design process, receive content from the client. Once you receive the deposit from the client, get them to send you any and all content pertaining to the website. This includes logo, brand guide, images, word copy, videos, and social media links. To facilitate the transfer of content, I like to use one of two things. One, email. If they don't have a ton of content, keep it simple and have them send it to you via email. Or two, Dropbox. If they have a lot of images and videos, sending over email won't be ideal. Have them create a Dropbox folder and send you access via link. Step number six of the web design process, set up the site. So this is where things can get tricky. How you set up your client's website really depends on the relationship between you and your client. For non-WordPress users, if you're using a website builder like Weebly, Squarespace, or Shopify, then this will be very straightforward. Most of these site builders have their own special designer version of their platform. Just follow their instructions. But if you're like the vast majority of web designers and you're using WordPress to build your client's websites, then you've got a variety of options. If you're smart and you're providing hosting services to all of your clients, you'll have your own servers leased with a company like Big Scoots, Cloudways, or Liquid Web, or at least some space off a shared server. Then it's as simple as creating a new WordPress installation on your server for each new client. The steps for this will depend on the host you use, and you should get in touch with them to find out more. This is where the live site will be hosted on your IP address until it's ready to launch and point a domain to. But if your client prefers not to host their website with you and will use their own hosting solution, then you just need to ask your client for the logins to their domain registrar and hosting company. Step number seven of the web design process, make the first draft of the homepage. You've got all the content you need, you've set up the new site with your website builder of choice, now it's finally time to start building websites. I like to do a full first draft of the homepage first. This gives the client a clear idea of the look and feel that I'm going for. Keep in mind everything you've learned about web design and get to work. Step number eight of the web design process, get feedback and make changes. Once the homepage is done, send the link over to your client and ask for feedback. If they're not crazy about it, Ask them for specifics on what they don't like about it. Try to dig deeper if they're giving a lot of subjective answers like, it's not as minimal as I would like, or I want it to be more professional, or can you add more flair? Good communication is key here. Your clients will often have an idea of what they want their site to look like, but find it difficult to express that into words. Or even worse, they won't have any idea of what they want but will have a lot of feelings about what they like and don't like. Be patient and slowly draw these ideas out like water from a well. If they love the first draft and don't have much negative feedback, you can then continue building the rest of the site in the same style. Step number nine of the web design process, continue building the rest of the site. Once you have a clear understanding of what the client wants the site to look like, and they've reached the point where they love the look of the homepage, you can continue building the rest of the pages. While you're building away, always focus on these two primary objectives. One, user experience. 
User experience is by far the most important aspect of great web design. Always prioritize UX over anything else. And number two, responsiveness. The second crucial aspect of great web design is responsiveness. In other words, ensuring that the user experience is awesome on any device, especially mobile. Step number 10 of the web design process, get more feedback, make more changes. As you complete each page, follow the same process of steps number seven and number eight. Continue to do so until all of the pages of the website have been fully designed. Because once the design is done, it's time to do some of the gritty backend work. Step number 11 of the web design process is work on the backend. Great web design involves a lot more than just pretty layouts, graphics, transitions, and animations. This front end work is the fun part, but the back end work is equally as important. Think of it as a skeleton of a beautiful website. Here are some important things to consider when working on the back end of your client's website. One, keyword optimization. You can have the most beautiful site in the World Wide Web, but if no one sees it, what's the point? Doing proper keyword research and integrating them into each page of the website is the first step of SEO. Things like headings, meta tags and descriptions, image alt tags should be optimized for your target keywords. But keep in mind that you should never simply stuff your target keyword into your page as much as you can. Google is too smart for that. The look, feel, and flow of your messaging should be natural. Always look at it from a human perspective. Would you want to read it? Two, site structure and internal linking. Having a clear site structure makes it easier for Google to crawl your site and get a better idea of what it's all about. And linking from one page to another is an important aspect of that. Internally linking from one page to another can help funnel your leads down the path you want them to take. For example, you could link a blog post about the eight most important podcast editing tips to a call to action that brings your reader to your podcast editing services page. And three, performance. Performance and site speed is becoming ever more important and competitive. Both Google and Facebook have shown this by building their own version of a super fast platform that allows websites to load within just a couple of seconds. AMP and Instant Article, respectively. Ensuring your website can load quickly and doesn't lag with bloated features can make the difference between someone becoming a client or going to your competitor instead. Step number 12, the web design process, get paid again. You've done it. The site is complete and ready to launch. But hang on just a second there, sport. You need to get the other 50% paid first, remember? Resend the invoice and have your client pay the remaining 50%. Again, ideally with a credit card. Step number 13 of the web design process, publish the site. Finally, it's time to launch your client's website. Again, how you proceed depends on the unique needs of your client. If they don't already own a domain, you will need to have them purchase one or do so on their behalf. I recommend my clients use Namecheap. They're among the cheapest out there and their customer service is better than companies like GoDaddy or Bluehost. If they buy the domain themselves, they will need to send you access to their account so you can modify their DNS settings. Now that you have the domain registered, you will need to point the domain to the server where the site is hosted. This involves changing the DNS settings. DNS stands for Domain Name System. DNS is how domain names are pointed to IP addresses. DNS also controls email delivery and is what allows you to use your web browser to find websites as well as send and receive email. Find out what IP address your server is located under, then point your client's DNS to that IP. Clear as mud? Step number 14 of the web design process testing and quality assurance. Oh, I'm sorry, did you think we were done? Once a site is launched, you are guaranteed to come across at least a handful of glitches or errors. You can't plan ahead for everything. Things like broken links. A broken link is a link that doesn't lead anywhere. It just takes you to an empty 404 page. A 404 code tells Google that page doesn't exist and to not include that link in their search results. Make sure all the links on your client's site actually work. Also, opt-ins and forms. 
Ever submitted your info into a website's contact form and nothing happens? There are a number of reasons why contact forms can break. Test every single one to ensure they actually do what they're supposed to. Usually, this is as simple as emailing the info to your client. Performance. Test the website and performance trackers like GT Metrics to confirm they are running blazingly fast. If it pulls up errors or suggestions on how to improve, implement them. You don't have to be ranked A plus for everything, but your pages should definitely not take more than a few seconds to load. And responsiveness. That fancy animated video in the above the fold section of the homepage looks sick on desktop. But did you check it out on your iPhone? Turns out, you can't even see the bottom half of it. Responsive web design can be tricky. Mobile is already the most common way people now access the internet and it is continuing to grow every year. And now there's an even larger variety of phone sizes to work with, making responsive design even more challenging if not done right. Make sure to test the big two, mobile and desktop. If you're really picky, you can check the tablet version as well. And finally, step 15 of the web design process. Get paid yet again and again and again. Look at you getting paid for a third time. I think you're starting to get the hang of this. If you've done this process correctly, you should be hosting your client's website once it's published. What features you offer and how much you charge is up to you. Because why give away that monthly passive income to some other web hosting company? I use Stripe to facilitate all of my hosting subscriptions. Once the site is published and I have the credit card info from my client, I set up the subscription with Stripe. It will then automatically charge my client's credit card monthly. There are a number of services that offer this feature, but I've found Stripe to be the best for me. However, Stripe is not available in every country, so you will need to check for yourself and see what alternatives are available if it's not. Now to conclude. Well, this should serve as a nice little checklist for your web design process. While it may not be an exact fit for you and your business, it should give you an overall view of what it takes to bring someone from lead to paid client. This is not the process I used when I first started my web design business. Trust me, you could barely even call what I used a process. But as my business grew and my knowledge and skills improved, my web design process was gradually sharpened and refined. I'm continuing to do that to this day. If I missed anything or you still have some questions, please feel free to shoot me a comment.